What's up, Raging Nation? How's it going? This is Alex. You and you're watching a Rage and Rona review. Got a review for you. Last weekend, I saw Ocean's 8, and Ocean's 8 is the fifth Ocean's film, if you consider the 1960 original, which starred Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, and Sammy Davis Jr. But actually, Ocean's 8 is the fourth film in the Ocean's 11 franchise, which was directed by Steven Soderbergh back in 2001. He had a sequel, Ocean's 12, in 2004, and then Ocean's 13 came out in 2000, 2007, which completed the trilogy. 11 years later, we have an all-female sequel, Ocean's 8, directed by Gary Ross with Steven Soderbergh producing. And this is a sequel. It's not a reboot. It's a sequel because this film follows or rather acknowledges the events of the previous films. This film is a continuation and we have Sandra Bullock who plays Debbie Ocean, who is the sister of Danny Ocean. So this is a sequel. And this is another all-star heist film. That's actually what it is. And I was looking forward to this one. This is a film that uh, I, you know, I, I wasn't super excited about it, but I wanted to watch it just because I really liked Ocean's 11. And I didn't like Ocean's 12, but I thought that Ocean's 13 was good. Not, not like great or anything, but it was good. It was decent. But the first one, and by first one I mean Ocean's Eleven, which came out in 2001, that one was a great film. And I really like that concept of the all-star cast, a heist film, the casino heist. Well, now, fast forward to 2018, we have Ocean's Eight, and, you know, it's a progressive film, especially with an all-female cast. And, well, I have a bunch of expectations, and I will tell you how I really felt about it after I give you my expectations. Now, I didn't actually film my expectations before watching the movie, I forgot to, but I will tell you what my expectations were for the film. And that is, I expected essentially an all-female version of the same film uh, from 2001, except instead of robbing a casino, they're robbing, they're, do they're doing a jewelry heist. That's all it is. I expect pretty much a carbon copy of the original film. I expected it to just follow the exact same formula and nothing more. And I didn't expect it to be great. I just expected it to be good. I, I just don't think they can make a really, really great film out of, out of this premise. Because this all-star um, uh, female cast doing this heist thing is just a gimmick. It really is. But can it be good? Of course it can. Can it be enjoyable? Of course it can. Ocean's 8 was exactly what I expected it to be. It has all the makings of a good film, but it follows the exact same formula of the original film, just as I predicted. And there really wasn't anything new introduced other than it was like a modernized or rather an updated version of the same story. They changed things up by not robbing a casino and um, uh, made it a jewelry heist. And they switched out the cast, an all-male all cast, to an all-female cast. All the characters, um, they all worked well. Uh, but it really is just a good movie. That's all it is. It's not a movie that that is great or outstanding or significant in any way, shape, or form. It's just a good heist film. But that's it. So it totally met my expectations. It did not exceed it. It did not um, uh, not meet them. It was just right there. And I came out of the theater just feeling, um, okay, that was good. Like, what can I say? That was exactly what I expected. Now let's talk about some things that worked for me in this film. Well, there are really two things and uh, I really liked the cast. I thought the, great, the cast was great. Uh, there was some really good talent there. There was some good performances. And I liked that it was a diverse cast as well as every single cast member has their distinct um, uh, personalities. I thought more so than the original film because I, I really wasn't sure what some of the roles or specific or distinct roles of some characters were versus other characters. Um, as for the cast in Ocean's 8, I really felt that their personalities were more distinct, so that worked for me. Another thing, or rather the last thing that I thought was 
really, really great that, that really worked for me was the homages. I love that they included homages to the original or they make callbacks or acknowledgement to the original film. That was cool. That was cool. I liked that. And it really just helped remind you that this is a sequel and not just some like an all-female reboot. It's, it's a continuation and they decided to do their own thing and they decided to make it a, 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 an all-girls club. Now here are the things that didn't work for me. First of all, it was just too perfect. It was just all too perfect. They had a plan and it ended up being a perfect plan and then it resulted in a completely perfect plan. It's not like a lot of other films where um, it's the perfect plan gone wrong. They thought they had the perfect plan, but it went wrong. It's not that film. This plan was executed perfectly, too perfectly, and they never come across any problems. And when they do come across a problem, it's really solved really, um, really um, like quickly, swiftly. Like, okay, we got a problem. I know a guy make a phone call, problem solved. <laughs> you know, they really don't have any actual problems. They just always find a way to work around it because like I said, everything's perfect. Which leads me to the end, which is the, the, the payoff is really not that satisfying. I mean, it really isn't because a lot of the, the payoff is just like, it's just narrated. It's just like, oh, we did this, we did that. And there we have it, it's all there. It doesn't make you feel like, whoa, they accomplished it. It was just so easily done. Everybody is so well skilled to the point where that nothing could possibly go wrong. So there are not really that many intense moments. Sure, there were a few like moments here and there, but there really weren't anything serious and you knew that they were gonna get past it. I also thought that the use of flashbacks was a bit weak in how they pulled things off. When there are things where you felt that like, um, you know, how the heck did they pull that off? They just show you in like a music video style. And then I was thinking like, okay, all right. So I guess we're supposed to buy that. <laughs> and finally, it's just too much like the original film, like verbatim, like complete carbon copy, switch out the male cast to a female cast, switch out casino for jewelry heist. It's the exact same film. It's the exact same formula. Those are the things that didn't work for me. Now, as for my overall thoughts, I just feel that if you're going to make a sequel to a film that's good, like a really, really good film, you should try not to imitate or copy it or try to use the exact same formula. What you should do instead is try to make it bigger or change things up, change up the formula, but still keep the essence of the original so that the audience is still reminded that this is a sequel or a reboot or whatever you want to call it. Change it up a bit. They didn't really change anything except that it's a jewelry heist and they switched out the cast to from male to off female. That's all they did. But besides that, it's the exact same film. And if you can, if you know what goes down in Ocean's 11, 12, and 13, like the general formula and the, the way everything plays out, then you're going to know how it all plays out in this film. I mean, they, they'll, you won't know the exact details, but generally speaking, you know what's going to happen. So, you know, it's a good film. It has all the makings of the good film, a great cast, a great story, which isn't a, obviously isn't original. And, you know, they have the, the conflict and the climax and everything that you need to identify it or rather solidify it as a good movie. It's a good movie. But if you watch the original, you won't feel that this is any better than the original. It's a good movie, but it doesn't do anything new and doesn't really uh, challenge you. So that's really uh, unfortunate, but I still had a good time watching it. So if you are a fan of the original, then check this one out. I'm going to give it a six and a half out of 10, six and a half. Um, definitely not a, a sequel that is a, um, a worthy sequel, but I'll say that it is a film that if you never watch the originals, then you will enjoy this film. You really will, just because uh, it, it still it still works as a clever heist film if you have never seen the originals. But as me being a fan of the very first film, this one is just too way, way, way too perfect. Just change things up. That's all you gotta do. Just change it up a bit. Anyways, that's all I gotta say in this review. I hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, if you enjoyed this review and you wanna see more, hit the like button, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like me on Facebook, The Rage Nation. Also follow me on Twitter, Rage Nation. My name is Alex. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.